Here's why circular reasoning can't actually prove anything. And some of these you've probably heard of before. Circular reasoning. This is when you assume what you're trying to prove. It usually happens where the premise contains the conclusion, though in some disguised way. Or the, the premise goes to the conclusion, which goes to the premise, which goes to the conclusion, and it keeps going back and forth and round and round. And you'll see examples of that uh, as we go through this. If you're trying to convince somebody of a proposition, you aren't going to get very far if you try to use that proposition as evidence of its own truth. If someone is not convinced that the proposition is true, they are not going to accept it as evidence. So far, so good, but this guy is an apologist, so you know there's something goofy coming. Here's another example. The fossil of simpler creatures are in the older rocks, says the scientist. Well, how do you know these rocks are older? Because they have the simpler fossils. The reason we believe that the rocks with the simpler fossils are older is because they are in deeper strata. Why the fuck would all the newer strata be underneath the older ones? Also, radiometric dating corroborates this inference. Uh, but we need to recognize when we're considering circular reasoning, like many of the earlier fallacies that we talked about, that they're, it's not always wrong to reason this way, especially in this particular situation. Not all circular reasoning is fallacious. We must, in fact, reason circularly, circularly when we reach our ultimate standard. So if you, if for a Christian, his ultimate standard is the scriptures, and you ask, why do you believe the scriptures? And the Christian would say, well, because they come from God. Well, how do you know they come from God? Well, God has declared that they've come from him. Well, how do you know that? Well, where do you read that God's declared it? Well, it's in the Bible. And the fact that we've gone circular there sh shows that we've reached our ultimate standard. It also shows that your ultimate standard is baseless. If you try to use this argument to convince people that the Bible was written by a god, pointing out that it says it's written by a god is obviously not going to convince them. Anybody can write a book that says it was written by a god. If the only argument you have in support of the claim that the Bible was written by a god is that it says so, then your argument is no stronger than the argument of anyone else who claims that some other book was written by a god because that book says so. When you point this out to a Apologists, they will often make some other arguments like the Bible contains fulfilled prophecies or it contains no errors or something like that. When they do this, they are effectively conceding that the circular argument is not a sufficient one. The only time circular reasoning is fallacious is when you start reasoning in this way when you haven't reached an ultimate standard, a proper ultimate standard. In a, in a similar way, if you ask a scientist, you know, why do you believe that science gives truth? He would probably respond something like, well, because science has proven that science gives truth. I doubt this guy has ever actually asked a scientist this question. The scientists who have a decent understanding of epistemology and the philosophy of science would likely say, we don't know that science gives truth. That's not the point of science. The point of science is to come up with ways of thinking about past observations that allow us to make predictions about later observations that consistently appear to match those later observations. All of those observations could be illusions, and the models scientists formulate to predict them could be contrary to reality, and it would not matter from a scientific perspective. Even if every scientific theory is wrong, as long as those wrong ideas allow us to make predictions that consistently appear to match our observations, that's all that matters to science. So you might ask, what's the point of using science if we can't be sure it reveals the truth? Here's how an actual scientist responds to that question. If you base medicine on, on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. Um, if you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works. Or at least it consistently appears to work, and that's what really matters. Even if everything we experience is a hallucination, it's still entirely reasonable to value the ability to predict those hallucinations. I also have a Patreon if you're into that kind of thing.